And other important uh, parts of the hyper DVG is ignoring event. It's a new feature that is added recently in the hyper DVG, which is called ignoring event. There are some cases when messages just overflow, like the, the hyper DVG just produces so much events or so much lags from the execution that uh, then uh, it cannot just uh, gather all of them. So, for example, in system calls, the, there are thousands of system calls that are executed in each each time in uh, Windows. And if you want to sa save all of them, then tons of messages are generated, and it's not possible to just all of the, uh, save all of them because if you fill all, uh, fully fill the RAM memory and HyperDVG will eventually is not able to deliver all of them to the debugger. So should like use some conditional statements like if, else if, and else just to filter the messages. And instead of uh, saving all of them, we should, we just need a portion of them. So instead of uh, saving all of them, we use these conditional statements. But in case if a lot of uh, messages are de delivered and uh, we, we want to just immediately uh, 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 ignore all of them, could use the flush command. It's clear that uh, if a message overflow occurs in HyperDVG, the newer messages will be replaced by previously not delivered messages. So or in these cases, we will lose some of the messages and for example, in case of event forwarding, if the output of the messages might be replaced by newer messages, if the buffer is already full. But there are also other ways. For example, if we connect in uh, other modes of debugging, this message overflow will never occur because in case of debugger mode, every message is, is delivered immediately none of them are buffered but if you are in the uh, vmi mode then the messages will be buffered and uh, this is a really important note that we should keep in mind a solution for a message overflow is flush command we previously saw the flush command the exact same functionality is also revealed or is also available in the script engine. If we want to uh, use some script to flush the buffers, we could use flush function in the script engine. And uh, by using this flush command, uh, this, uh, this flush function in the script engine, all of the currently buffered and not delivered messages will be flushed and ignored. So here is a simple example in which I set an EPT hook in this address. And if uh, RAX is equal to 55 uh, and RDX is equal to this, then we will print the target function is called. But if RCX register is equal to 75, then the event will be disabled. The second event will be disabled and a flash function will be called. There are also other mechanisms uh, for ignoring events. <laughs> the ignoring events is a powerful uh, feature of the HyperDVG script engine. And by using event ignorance, there are some of the commands in HyperDVG that support event ignorance. For example, the system call command, for example, the IO in and IO out command, or MSR read or MSR and also other commands. These commands can be ignored, which means that the effects of these commands will be ignored in the case if we want to manage it for some conditional uh, for some conditions in the script engine because hyper dbg generally emulates the behavior of uh, events for example hyper dbg uh, emulates the behavior of syscall uh, instruction after the vm exit so if the user just wants to ignore the emulation of some events then it's possible to simply use simple event a simple function which is called event underline uh, sc which stands for event underline short circuiting this is a mechanism of hyper dvg and then we could specify one or zero or true or false as its uh, arguments uh, so if it's one then the hyper dvg will ignore the execution of that event or ignore the emulation of that event Using this, we could just use a fake result. For example, we could uh, ignore some system calls, or for example, we could ignore some input and outputs. 
and uh, just add some fake results as a result and the operating system and the target debugger will never know that this system call is actually never executed only fake results are available so for example we could ignore some reads or ignore some writes into the files this is a really powerful feature and if you want to or not all of the events in hybrid we just support this uh, event ignorance because some of them because it just not makes any sense in case of some events so if you want uh, to see whether the target event supports event ignorance or not or even sh short circuiting or not you could just see the documentation for this command let's see an example there is a, a command for there is a short a short circuiting example here uh, we want to check if the system uh, call number for nt create file we only check whether the system call uh, is for nt create file and if because in case of system calls the system call number is located in rx register and in current version of the windows 0x55 corresponds to nt create file and then we will check uh, its second argument because in fast call uh, the in, in system calls in fast call the parameters are passed in r6 rdx uh, r8 and r9 then a stack uh, so the second arguments passed in rdx we, we only modify the result to return 0x uh, this code uh, which corresponds to a, stati a status access denied and instead of running the system call to delete uh, to uh, perform delete of special file we simply use event uh, underline sc1 to ignore the emulation or ignore the execution of the system call so the system call will be ignored let's see how we can uh, use this command i uh, try to uh, run a notepad file two notepads are opened and i will print I will save hyperdvg to this file. Uh, Test.txt. Now I want to just open this file by using <coughs> this notepad, this instance of uh, notepad. So let's just try to run the hyperdvg. After that, I try to run task manager to see the process ID of this notepad um, process. So we should also convert it to uh, hexadecimal. So this is the hexadecimal of the process ID. So I use a syscall command uh, on this target P, uh, PID, process ID. After that, I will use a script. And I know that if, if Notepad wants to open this special file, then it should uh, it should open it uh, by using empty create file and the empty create, uh, create file system call number is 0x55 uh, so i will check if at sign rx or the system call number equals to 0x55 and if it's uh, an empty open file then i simply set uh, the rx to an access denied i i don't know the exact code for access denied yeah here it is i will try to copy it
and uh, instead of executing a system call i will ignore it so uh, it's like nothing happens here like a system call is ignored and the notepad is not able to run any empty open file system call so he, here was the uh, a script now let's try to just simply open this test file as and as we can see that now notepad shows some errors like the handle is invalid and we could not open this file and, and you can also see if if you even want to open other files uh some some weird thing happens here the notepad cannot simply use this system call and because of the script that we used so uh, let's just try to uh clear it and I try to open it again. No, we are able to open this hyper duty file. Okay, uh, now that we see an example of uh, event short circuiting or event ignorance for the syscall command, we can also uh, we, we can uh, also see another example about uh, event ignorance for the monitor command uh the only uh thing about uh <clears throat> monitor command is that uh, event short circuiting or event ignorance have two distinct behaviors for reason rights and for the execution uh the short circuiting mecha mechanism for reason right is like disregarding or ignoring the execution of uh instructions uh that read or write uh from the memory or to the memory such as move instructions for example uh it's like these instructions were never executed and uh, reads are never performed or writes are never performed but for the execution, if we use the short circuiting mechanism, it's like blocking the execution at the target address range. Uh, uh, and it prevents the execution of the specific page, prevents the execution of a specific thread, or a specific process will pause that process, if that makes sense. Uh, once that page wants to get executed, HyperDBG will block the execution in that page. Again, the, the page tries again to execute. Again, HyperDBG blocks. And after some time, uh, Windows comes and context switch the process. Uh, so uh, once the Windows returns to this process, again, it wants to uh, execute uh, the target address and again hyperdivision will block it so it's like pausing that um, uh, uh, process or pausing that thread uh, once you use the short circuit and don't worry about it we have some examples about it I will show you uh, later but uh, in case uh, once we don't use uh, uh, this event SC or uh, once we uh, not use this uh, even short circuiting mechanism it's like stepping through the instructions in that page so it means once uh the uh the target page uh triggers one event one monitor event and uh, we we don't use event sc so it continues normally executes one instruction and again on next instruction it uh, again trigger uh the event so it's like a stepping uh here are some uh, examples in the first example we intercept the execution starting from this address to this address on this specific process we, we blocked the execution once a thread uh, comes to this address is trapped and cannot execution anymore without uh, uh without any further actions from the uh, debugger and uh, <coughs> And this uh, monitor command uh, intercepts any writes uh, starting from this address to this address on this specific process and uh, it ignores the write. For example, we, we don't want, uh, uh, we, we want to 
prevents any memory write on a special variable so we use uh, this uh, for we use the monitor like this and uh, uh, prevent uh, or ignore the uh, memory write by using event sc or again if we want to ignore uh, reads from this address uh, we can also use event sc and uh, set uh, the registers manually now let's see the examples uh, uh, for uh, reads and writes, I made uh, uh, one uh, simple uh, <clears throat> program. Uh, this program consists of a volatile uh, integer uh, uh, integer uh, variable named test. Uh, we, we print the process id and uh, the address of the test and after that try to increment it uh, each two seconds a test is incre incremented by one and we will show it here now let's uh, ba uh, come back to the uh, debuggy i will continue it uh, and uh, run write ignore you can see that this is the process and uh, this uh, variable is incremented each time so i try to get its uh, memory address uh, go back to debugger write a monitor command uh, start uh, for the writes uh, starting from this address and ending from this address plus four because it's an int uh, integer integer uh, uh, thirty two uh, bit uh, long or four byte long variable and in the S script I I will write uh, a printf stating that uh, memory write is ignored at this address context sudo register and then i write event sc1 and i will run as you can see it's incremented here one two three four five uh five six seven and now that uh, we executed uh, we didn't specify the uh, process id let's again What's this S script? Oh, I have a typo here. Okay, now we return to the debugging, and as you can see, uh, it detects the uh each each time this process tries to write uh into this address it's ignored and uh, it just shows eight and we can uh, detect the, the execution or uh, we can intercept it here in this uh window and once we clear the event you can see that it normally increments to 9 10 uh, 11 uh no uh let's go to another example uh, for the second uh, example i made a simple hello world uh program uh we previously have this example in the previous part uh, but I think it's just uh, really good to be used in this example for blocking the execution and uh, to show how we can uh, block the execution in this module. Uh, 
so uh, you can compile it and after that you can uh, come back to the debugger run it we can we can use uh, dot start command to start this process and once I press G we come to its entry point again I press G to run it as you can see uh, this is a, a normal hello world program that shows hello world each two seconds in an infinite loop so I uh, go back to the debugger again I don't know the process ID so let's see the list of processes and uh, hello world is here 3d see so uh, i i just want to see uh, the modules of this uh process so i use lm command to see the user mode modules as you can see it's here uh the entry point is at this address and uh, this module starts from this address we can uh intercept the execution for the entire module for example we can use uh, it from uh, the very first uh, uh, address but we can also use a page that we know that it uh, it will be executed so uh, i just create uh, one monitor command for the execution starting from this address let's uh, perform the uh, in, uh, the execution blocking on an entire page where the entry point is also located there so i use this address again uh, is it like this because i want to intercept it on one page you can extend uh, you can uh, add some additional page uh, if you think that this module will be executed on other pages but i think this is enough because it's a really a small program uh, with uh, probably small instructions, a small number of instructions, uh, or short number of instructions actually. So I write uh, the process ID. Don't forget the process ID because we are not in the context of hyper uh, in the context of this process. So I write an S script and uh, I use event sc1 uh, and show a printf showing that uh, instruction fetch is blocked at this address yeah that's enough no let's run it and as you can see we run it successfully no as you can see here hyperdwig is flooded with a lot of messages that say uh, the instruction execution is blocked it's because each time windows tries to context switch and run some instructions in this process hyperdwig will show this message so it's probably in, in this case it's probably better not to show any message to just not make the system slow uh, we can we could use it uh, without uh, without any uh, uh, extra messages. But once we continue this target debuggy, uh, you can see that it again start to show uh, hello world messages and it starts to execute its normal execution. Now let's see what happens if we run the previous example without any message. So, yeah. As you can see, again, it's blocked and uh, there is no printf. So uh, this is not a really heavy task of sending messages here and it works perfect. Again, if uh, I clear the, the events, uh, you can see that this process start uh, to execute normally uh, without blocking its instructions. 